So in the last video, we talked about partial fraction expansion. And in this video, we're going to talk about partial fraction expansion with repeated roots. Uh, so with extra roots. Um, and what do I mean by repeated roots? Well, if we've got a 1 over x uh, times 1 over x plus 1, uh, so 1 over x plus 1, that doesn't have any repeated roots. But anytime you've got, for example, a squared term, so x squared or x plus 1 squared, that's what I mean when I say repeated root. Um, so what does this equal? Well, we know that this is, if, if you've seen it in class before, you know that this is equal to some coefficient over x squared plus some other coefficient over x plus some third coefficient over x plus 1. And how do we find it? Well, in the last video, we came up with this general idea of getting a, b, and c by themselves, by multiplication. So if we want to get a by itself in this case, or in, in this equation, we want to multiply everything by x squared. So we want to multiply everything by x squared. And once we do that, uh, so this x squared will cancel on the a, this x squared will cancel. Um, we'll end up with 1 over x plus 1 is equal to a plus, and then we multiply b over x times x squared, so we've just got b times x, uh, and then we've got this c times x squared over x plus 1 term. And then that's great. Uh, now we can just take the limit. So if, if, you, if you didn't watch my last video, um, once we have it in this form, uh, this is screaming to us, uh, plug in x is equal to 0. So this equation is like, please, please plug in x is equal to zero and you will, you will just have a for free. And mathematically what we want to do is take the limit, or formally what we want to do is take the limit as x approaches zero. I prefer to think of it in this case as just plugging in zero because that's essentially what we're doing. So if we do that, then this term will cancel, this term will cancel. Uh, we just plug in zero here and we're left with one over zero plus one, which is just one is equal to a, or a is equal to 1. Beautiful. And so let's do the same exact thing for c. And why why not b? Well, because I know that that will be difficult. Um, so we're going to do c first. So if we just rewrite this equation real quick, so 1 over x squared times 1 over x plus 1 is just equal to a over x squared plus b over x plus c over x plus 1. And now we multiply the whole thing by x plus 1. So we multiply both sides by x plus 1. And, you know, this is okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We're, we're not doing anything nefarious. Well, I mean, we kind of are, but, uh, but that's, that, that's okay. So these x plus 1s will cancel. This x plus 1 will cancel. And so on the left-hand side, we're just left with 1 over x squared. And on the right-hand side, we're left with a over x squared times x plus 1 plus b over x times x plus 1 plus c. And it, once you see this, you, you, can, you can tell that x is just begging to be minus 1. It wants to be minus 1 so badly, uh, because if it is minus 1, then we have c all by itself. And so again, we'll take the limit uh, as x approaches minus 1, or we will just plug in um, x being minus 1. Um, but the, the limit is just the way of doing it formally. And so on the left-hand side, if we plug in x is equal to minus 1, we get 1 over minus 1 squared, uh, which is equal to 1. Um, so actually, let me, let, me not, let me not do that just yet. Uh, so 1 over minus 1 squared is just equal to, well, this term cancels out because we've got a 0 being multiplied by a. This term cancels out, and we're left with c. So if we square negative 1, we know that it's just 1, and we're left with our coefficient c. Well, great. So, I mean, th this, is, this has been working out real well so far. So if we want to get b, uh, let's just try to do the same thing. So let's say we, we know we've got 1 over x squared times 1 over x plus 1, again, is equal to these coefficients, b over x, c over x plus 1. And so to get b by itself, let's just multiply everything by x. I mean, it's, it's been working really well for us so far, so I don't see a reason not to do it, uh, or at least not to try it. And so we end up with, on the left-hand side, 1 over x, because one of the x's cancels, uh, times 1 over x plus 1, is equal to a over x plus b 
plus c times x over x plus one. And this is cool, right? We got b by itself, but now we have a problem because if we try to take the limit as x approaches zero, or if we try to plug in x is equal to zero, then this term and this term both explode. Uh, so they approach infinity and that's, that's no good. That doesn't give us any information. That's not helpful. So what do we do? Because, I mean, we really want to save this technique, right? Because it's easy to remember, like, we don't have to do very much. We just need to get terms by themselves. Uh, so we have to get rid of these x's on the bottom. We, we really can't get around that. Um, and so let's just try Let's just try this real quick. Let's try multiplying everything by x again. Um, so let's just try multiplying everything by x. Because, I mean, we have to get rid of these x's. So I really don't see a way around this. Um, so the x's will cancel, the x cancels here, and we're left with 1 over x plus 1 uh, is equal to a plus bx plus c times x squared over x plus 1. But now we've also got a problem, because if we try to take the limit here uh, as x approaches 0, then the b and the c will cancel. And we know that we wanted to get b. Like the whole point of this was to get b. So how do we how do we get it by itself? Well, I mean, let's think about what we've been doing so far. We've been playing around with certain mathematical tools. So we've been using some tools. So we've been using limits, right? So we've been taking limits of expressions to, to rearrange equations how we want them. Uh, we've been multiplying by things like x and x plus one and other other variants of that. And what's one tool we haven't used thus far? Well, we haven't used the derivative. So why don't we just try that? Why don't we just see what happens uh, when we take the derivative of this expression? So if we take the derivative of both sides, I mean, taking the derivative of two sides that are equal to each other, they're still gonna be equal to each other because um, we're doing the same thing to both sides. So on the left, we'll get negative one over x plus one squared. And on the right, the derivative actually kills this a because it's just a constant. And it gets rid of this x for us in this b term. So this is just equal to b plus, and then there's gonna be a term, uh, there's gonna be a term after c. So let's just use the quotient rule real quick. So u prime v minus, uh, minus v prime u over v squared. This is just the way that I remember it. So u here is x. So u prime is 2x uh, times, oh, I didn't mean to do that, um, times v, which is x plus 1. So times x plus 1. And then minus uh, v prime u. So v prime is just 1, because that's the derivative of x plus 1, times x squared. And then this is all over x plus 1 squared. And if we rearrange this a little bit, you'll see that there's always these x terms. So there's these x terms everywhere out in front of, or everywhere in C. So we've got C times, if we just take that out, uh, x, 2 times x plus 1 minus x divided by x plus 1 squared. Uh, so b plus that uh, negative 1 x plus 1 squared. And so now we can take the limit because we've got this x out front. Uh, so we're, we really want to plug in zero here. We really, really want to. Uh, so we just take the limit of both sides as x approaches zero. And if we do that, well, this here will, this x will just cancel because it's, you're just plugging in zero. This term will go away and we'll be left with b is just equal to negative one over one squared or b is equal to negative one and so this is awesome we've saved our uh we've saved our easy method for partial fraction expansion so now we know uh that we multiply to get things so to get a b c uh, by themselves and then we take the limit and if that doesn't work, then we try taking a derivative, and then we try taking the limit again. And so what we've got now is a really easy, powerful heuristic 
for figuring out how to do partial fraction expansion. And you might guess uh, what happens when you've got, say, cubed roots, so like a 1 over x cubed or a 1 over x plus 1 cubed. Well, you'll end up needing to take the derivative twice and then take the limit. And so anytime you see these repeated roots, you can use this, this method that we've been using thus far. Uh, but at some point, you're going to need to take a derivative to find one of the coefficients. And it should be pretty obvious to you when you're using the method uh, where and how you should take that derivative. And so this is awesome. It's easy, simple to remember, and we can just sort of experiment with it. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.